Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Now I do have to apologize, I've been missing in action for a couple of weeks. I had a storage unit that I still had to sort out from when I moved my shop out of the shopping center. So I had to get everything out, get all the boxes unpacked and you know with all this rain as well, it was just quite a bit of a mess here in the shop section. So I had to sort that out. I even received a message this morning on WhatsApp from my customer saying that she's missing me on Facebook and on the YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much for your lovely message and like I messaged back to you, um, I'm back on track, you will be getting your YouTube videos again. Now for this week's tips video that I'm going to do is really just showing you one of my techniques when I do so. Um, I'm busy making this white top and it's got quite a high neckline and I needed to leave myself a bit of an opening at the back because it's on the fold on the front. Now I designed for this top this teardrop opening there and always when we are working with these sort of curved areas we don't always get that neat finish that we want. So while I was busy sewing this, I actually recorded it just to show you a couple of my tips when I do work with these curved areas. This is also something that I do when I work with chiffon. If you've done my design and sew along on my Schwefert Academy for the chiffon top, there I also showed you how I do um, the neck band, how I first curve it and then I sew it. So obviously when I'm working with my curves like that and I need that neat finish, I go and I cut my pattern piece on the bias. Now if you're not sure what the bias is, I've also done a little video for you on how I changed my pattern piece to the bias. Now a bias for me is something that I don't always use it as much, but as I said, when I need shape somewhere, when I'm going to sew in, area where I need that shape and I need that clean finish, I do go and change my pattern pieces or to cut them on the bias. Now remember cutting on the bias is instead of my normal grain line on my pattern piece, I change that grain line and I actually go draw that line on my pattern piece at a 45 degree angle. That 45 degree angle grain line then gets laid out on my pattern piece and that will be running with the grain line of my fabric. And in that way, my pattern piece is then angled. And cutting it on the bias then allows me to manipulate my fabric. I can stretch it on certain areas where I want to. And if we look at this as well, on this outer edge of this curve, I could go ahead and I could shape the fabric before I actually even sewed it. So I went and I really curved that area and manipulating. And on that outer edge, I went and I stretched my fabric. What happens if we don't do it that way is that I also get too much fabric then on this inner section and um, that's when we start getting that wavy look which we don't want. It actually looks stretched out there and if we look at mine you can see it's nice and flat against my mannequin. There's no excessive fabric, no waving so it actually came out perfect. So this is really what I wanted to share with you today is just show you my whole process and it's all little videos that I took as I was sewing and I'm just putting them together for you so that you can see. So I'm just going to chat to you about the grain line, how I change it to the 45 degree. I'll show you my pressing technique that I have and also then the sewing that I do to get that finish. I hope that you're going to enjoy this tip and that you are going to be able to use it in future sewing projects. I decided I wanted a little bit of a teardrop opening because I am also going to cut my pattern on the fold. I didn't want to go and have a center back seam as well. So let's go and do our teardrop now. So again, take your designer's companion. We are going to use that small little curve that we have over there. And I want you to go and measure down for me from our neck point over there. Go and measure down about six centimeters. Now that is just over two inches. I will look it up and I'll just put it up for you so you know what my measurement was in inches. And all I'm going to do now, I'm going to flip my designer's companion over and with that curve, I'm actually going to wherever I mark down to, I'm going to put it down and I can move it around and decide how deep in do I want to go. I don't want to go in too deep on that section. So I think if I go and do that, that shape over there, it's going to give me a beautiful shape. And remember, we are wanting to connect exactly to that point over there. So I'm going to draw that line. 
and that is going to give us a beautiful teardrop just imagine it carrying it on on that section over there so that is the opening that I'm going to do for myself on that section now because we are working on the fold you can when we are cutting out and I just want to write fold now because we are going to work on the fold we are going to cut this fabric on the fold all the way up to our neckline and then only will I go and I am going to cut out on that line. This is not going to get any seam allowance added. That is the shape that I want. And the finish that I'm going to do, I'm going to take a, a piece of, um, I'm going to take a band that I've cut on the bias. I'm going to make my own bias binding with my fabric. And we are then going to put that bias binding around this area. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually, my bias binding, I'm going to slip over that area. So I don't need any seam allowance whatsoever on that section. Um, for me, doing it the way I'm going to show you is going to be the best way to actually keep that beautiful shape. As soon as we want to start adding seam allowances, we're going to sew on that area. And remember, we're not on the grain anymore. We've got that curve. We've got to also consider my fabric can stretch. It can move out. So my finish that I'm going to do, you will see we are going to get a perfect teardrop on that section over there. Now, how are you going to draw your bias? Let me show you. If you are looking at your line drafter, I'm just going to put this on my vellum so you can see. You will notice that we've got these pink lines running across our ruler and it says they're 45 degree angle and it says true bias. Now I'm going to take this line and I'm going to match it up with my line that I've drawn, the lengthwise line. So it will basically be on top of that line. So let me go and do that. I'm actually going to work on that line. It's just easier for the angle that I'm working. So I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to slide it down on that line. So can you see I keep this 45 degree angle line on my lengthwise line that I've got there. And now this angle that I'm creating there, that is going to be my bias line on my pattern that I'm going to draw. So that is going to give me my 45 degrees. So when you are going to be cutting out your pattern. You are going to put this line, this grain line on the grain of your fabric and your pattern will then be angled 45 degrees. So that is what you need to do there for me. Again, no seam allowances. We are only going to cut one. So you can say times one and you can go and just say binding on there. So you know what this pattern piece is going to be. Now I've gone ahead and I've actually cut one out because I just wanted to show you here as well. When we are going to work with our binding, when you've cut it out, you are going to go and you are going to press this for me in half. Let's just get this so I can see what I'm doing there. All right. So you are basically going to press this in half. We're going to make our own bias binding. I'm not going to be using storeboard. And then all you're going to do once you've done that, you're going to open it up. And this line is going to go to the center and you're going to press it for us. And we are going to take that one and also bring it to the center. And we are going to press that. There we go. Let's just imagine that. And then we're going to close it and we're going to press it again. So we are going to be making our own bias binding. Now again, the way I've cut it, working with a softer fabric as well, I want to be careful that I'm not going to be affecting this area, stretching it out, anything like that. And also it's easy to stretch it out because as soon as I take my binding that I've made and I start working on that area, I can stretch this whole section. So what I like to do, and I'm just going to go back to that, I actually took some of my vellum, I folded it in half and I placed it under the pattern and I've gone and I just cut out a little template for myself. Can you see this? So there's my teardrop that I have. I went then and I took my bias binding strip that I've cut. Remember we've cut it on the bias so there is movement on this piece of fabric as well. So I went and I pressed it in half. So you're literally going to take it, press it in half and once it's pressed in half you're going to take these sections that we have there. I've already pre-pressed mine, but you're going to take this, bring it to the halfway fold, halfway fold, press it down again, and then I went and I folded it and I did that. Now for me to not stretch out this area incorrectly, and this is just something I do, I pre-shape my bias tape on that. So all I'm going to do 
because there's no seam allowance there. I didn't want seam allowance. This I cut on my stitching line. Now I'm just going to take my template and I hope you can see what I'm doing with this angle that I'm recording. I start putting my bias tape or my template in my bias tape. Can you see this? I start shaping it and I make sure I'm going around this curve as well. Take, it takes a bit of patience to do this because I'm working with a very flimsy fabric but I'm making sure I am going around that corner. Can you see how I'm starting to shape my fabric there? And I can now already go and just pull it a little bit. My one finger is holding it down. On this bottom curve, I'm already pulling a little bit on my tape. And you've just got to keep maneuvering it. Just keep going back till you've got it right. So I'm going to show you this whole process. There we go. There it's going flat. I'm pushing it flat. I'm pushing it flat. Can you see that now? So my tape is now looking like this. And now I'm going to put a bit of steam to it. I just want to get that flat. Can you see that? Again, I'm going to keep working this until I am happy with that shape. And now already I can see, all right, I'm a little bit short on this. So I know it's going to be an issue. So let's go back. And I'm going to take it and move it a little bit more. And again, so I am literally playing with my shape that I've got on my fabric. I don't want to go and play on my fabric and do this on my fabric because it is a soft fabric. I am going to pick up an issue. I keep moving it too much. So let's go back. Let me just do this off camera or let's see if I can just push it up that section. I'm just going to pull it. That's starting to look better. So that is really the shape that I want my bias binding to be. Can you see that? So there's my binding. Now I can go and I'm just pulling it a little bit more there because I want a little bit of a stretch there. And I'm happy with that. Now I'm actually going to press this. And if I'm pressing it like this, I am shaping my band already so that I don't have to go and do this when I am working on my fabric. So let's go and press this now. And I'm going to give it a bit of steam as well. I hope I've got water in my press. There we go. And now I've got a perfect shape. I'm not going to get puckers, puckers on that area. I'm not going to stretch it out by accident because I've gone and I've created the shape for that opening that I want at the back of my neckline. And once I've done that, again, I'm just going to put this on there. I'm just going to hold it and I'm going to let this cool down in that shape before I actually take it off my template. Now this is for me so much easier now going to my fabric. I just want to see it's almost cool. I don't want to take it off until it's actually cooled down. I want it to keep, um, keep the shape that I've pressed there. But now for me when I'm going to do my little teardrop um, at the back I know I'm going to get the shape that I wanted, that I planned when I actually did my pattern work. It's still warm, but I'm going to take it off. I do want to show you what it looks like. There we go. Can you see? So I've already gone and shaped it to that section. And I can really go and press it again. And also what I will do, I will be sure to mark exactly my center point as well. So that when I work on my fabric, I will pin first on the center and I will start working it into that section. But can you see on there already? And I can literally lift it, put it down. Um, I've gone and stretched it out on that section where I needed to stretch a little bit without stretching it out on this section. If you stretch it out on the wrong section, we are going to get a terrible, terrible finish on the back. I'm actually just adding this in. I thought I needed to show you what our tape is going to look like once we've done our bias tape. Now you can see my opening that I have there. If I just go ahead and I'm just going to spin a straight piece there, I'm not going to get the correct shape because I will be pulling and working and I can go and I can really distort my fabric. Look at that because we are not on the grain we've gone off our grain on that section but now look at this because this is pre-shaped i can just literally go and i'm going to put it on there obviously when i am going to be working i will be sliding my fabric between that band that i've done and then i can go and baste it and i'm just going to sew it down on that section and can you see i've still got a bit of movement i can still move my 
tape on that section but look how beautiful that is going to look after hand basting you can see that my curve has stayed nice and smooth i've got no buckling whatsoever i did make sure when i was busy basting that i took my needle and gripped this fabric and kept on pushing it into the fold against there and then another thing that i did i also made sure that i'm feeling with my fingers so i can feel that this line and my top line was matching up and after basting i also went and gave it another press to make sure everything is flat now when i usually do my edge stitching i would go and use my edge stitch foot with my guide working on this area i just felt that everything is closed up i can't see what i'm doing and i don't want to make a mistake here i don't want to go unpicking so i decided now for my edge stitching that i'm going to use my zipper foot and i'm going to use the edge of my zipper foot and I'm going to put it on the edge of the binding and that will be how I'm going to be guiding this binding. All I have to do is just move my needle position now so that I am going to be about, I would say about there, it's going to give me about two millimeters in from the edge. I'm not going to be right on the edge. If I am exactly on that edge, I do stand a chance of actually not catching that bottom section and then my fabric can pull out on that section. So let's go and just place our fabric and let's go move needle positions so I'm going to bring my needle down and I'm going to see I need to go a little bit more and I am happy where I am there let me just come closer and see I'm happy with that position and I'm going to now just go and slowly sew around this curved area I just wanted to show you when I do get to my curve I do hold on to my back piece there and I will be actually pulling it a little bit to that side to that side and maneuvering it there so let's just do that and you can see there straightening it a little bit if you want to you can even lift your foot and just move your fabric but I do tend to just do this and I make sure everything is lining up so I prefer to just actually swivel it there we go I'm going very slow around this corner as I said I really don't want to unpick anything on this fabric it's going to be a nightmare there we go so can you see how I am actually with my hands bringing the fabric around without lifting my presser foot. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I will just go and give it a final press on this area so everything is nice and flat and smooth.